good, good afternoon. Uh, we, we wanted to provide a, an update on our immunization campaign. And uh, so we want to make sure that our community is aware of, of, of what's happening with the campaign and what are our next step and what we're doing right now. Uh, until today, uh, we have a minister in the county, uh, more than 29,000 uh, vaccine doses. Uh, those include vaccinating uh, all the, the hospital uh, employees that, uh, that ask for the vaccination. And, and right now, uh, our local hospitals are engaged in offering the, the second dose of vaccine to their, to their employees. And also, uh, we started vaccinating uh, the rest of the uh, healthcare providers workforce here in, in Clark County. Uh, as, as you may know, the, the vaccine is being distributed in phases. Uh, we, we, we right now are is, is still engaged uh, in the first uh, tier of offering vaccine to healthcare uh, providers. Uh, as you heard from, from the state um, and the governor uh, this week, the state of Nevada modified its vaccination uh, playbook and uh, and now uh, it will be look at uh, two different uh, priority lanes, uh, one based on, on age and the other based on occupation or, or essential uh, workforce uh, groups. So uh, right now, the health district is offering vaccines at uh, our main site at the Cardinal Boulevard and also at the uh, Western High School. Uh, also, uh, our partners, uh, such as the uh, University, uh, UNLV, uh, Rosemont University, and, uh, and Toro University, are collaborating with us in this vaccination campaign, and they are also uh, offering uh, this vaccine at different days during the week. Uh, also, uh, this week, uh, the, the county will open uh, the Cashman Center as our first uh, mega site uh, for the vaccination campaign. And the details of that uh, will be shared uh, later on. Uh, I, I also want to say that uh, uh, starting tomorrow, we will, we will be offering vaccine to seniors uh, 70 years old and over. And, and also uh, we'll start offering a vaccine to to the, fr the frontline community uh, 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 essential workers, and and that, according to the to the state playbook, is uh, is is the first block coming after public safety, which is already included into uh, the the target for this uh, phase of the campaign. So, uh, in that uh, frontline community support. Uh, there are uh, different groups that uh, I will mention some of them, for example, uh, education, which is uh, pretty much uh, uh, our uh, Clark County School District uh, employees and also uh, employees from uh, other uh, uh, health system here in, in, the, in the county. Uh, also, uh, the Nevada System of Higher Education, which is the colleges and, and universities included there and uh, and also uh, included there are a continuity of, of governance which is uh, a city um, and county uh, government uh, employees and staff and as well as uh, transportation and and also a uh, mortuary services and then there is uh, another group which is a uh, more uh, widely defined, which is called uh, community support uh, frontline staff, and and that's a relatively large group, and, and we will pu publish the definition of that group so everybody can see that uh, properly. Uh, we uh, we we want to emphasize that uh, uh, now that we are uh, expanding uh, our offer of vaccine to the to the community, uh, we we need to be aware that uh, that this offering is 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 contingent to 
to the availability of vaccines that we receive from uh, from the federal government uh, through the state. Our our capacity is, is starting uh, next week uh, will be uh, to to be able to vaccinate between 40 to 45,000 people a week, and uh, our ability to reach that number weekly, uh, of course, is depending on the number of vaccines that we receive every week. And this is something that uh, we are, of course, working with the state and the federal authorities uh, in order to make sure that we receive uh, uh, those vaccines. Uh, so, what I mean by this is that we will need a lot of support from our community uh, in terms of understanding that uh, not everybody can be vaccinated at once because our capacity doesn't allow uh, to reach uh, all our, our residents at once and uh, uh, the vaccine will be available to all our, our residents as we move forward uh, on this campaign. I, I will stop here and I will introduce uh, our, uh, uh, our, our chairman, uh, Mr. Scott Black, and then the, our uh, commissioner, Kirk Patrick, uh, to, to follow up on this. Thank you, Dr. Legan. I first just want to say how much I appreciate the, the dedicated effort from you and your team at the Health District. Um, I've spoken to Ms. Rue Piper on a number of occasions, and even though the health district is working in concert with the state uh, in terms of allocation, in terms of building and, and customizing the plan that works best for Southern Nevada, it's uh, critically important that we create a, a branch out approach to all the community partners you mentioned, uh, in INCHI, UNLV, uh, CSN. Um, we have lots of partners that we need to lean on to make this campaign successful. So I just want to say thank you to you and your team and your leadership. Uh, definitely Commissioner Kirkpatrick for her and her team for the leadership to just, she's, she's the one on the front line keeping all the, uh, all, she's the glue that keeping this organization together in terms of this, this effort from beginning till now with the pandemic. So I just want to say thank you. And, uh, you know, from a North Las Vegas perspective, we're here to help and be a partner as well as, as everyone else in the community. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Legon, and um, really um, for, for the press, there's a couple of things that you can do to help us um, help the community. It's super important that folks remember that um, this is being done very methodical and we have to roll this out much like we did with testing so that uh, we can work through the bugs. And, um, but we have a great model and we will be rolling out this vaccine. So first and foremost, we ask for your patience because it does take patience um, to get through this. And remember that you already have the tools at home today, which is hand washing, social distancing um, that you can do to help us until we can get to you vaccinated. Uh, but we are uh, one, we have two tracks that we have to do. One, most importantly, is we have to uh, take care of our seniors because we know our senior population, 60 to 80, um, is the highest capacity in the hospitals. So it's very important we have that track. At the same time, we also need to preserve our workforce. Uh, remember, we're over one year into this. Uh, for many of us, we started back in January of last year um, having these discussions. So uh, if the press, you know, understand that we just need a little bit of patience, there are uh, several different groups that we have to get to. We are um, asking employers to start asking your employees how many are even anticipating getting it, because as Dr. Lagon pointed out, that does help us kind of plan a little bit better with our projections. Joanne is only as good with the numbers as she knows what's coming. And she has to try and balance um, the vaccines today that we're getting versus um, the highest need out there. So uh, Dr. Lagon, really the health district has done yeoman's work on this. And I think most of us thought we would be done around summertime. However, I feel like this is the last hurdle and um, the county and Chief Steinbach is amazing with his team. Um, I feel like we're in a good spot and the press can just help us um, navigate over the next couple of weeks and we can get through these groups that we will 
have a well-oiled machine for you and we will be able to move these vaccines to our community. So thanks for having us on here. Thank you. Um, uh, Chief? Uh, just here to uh, support you today, Dr. Legan, and answer any questions uh, that may arise that, that run down the, on the operations side or with emergency management. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, um, Joan is our uh, uh, chief administrative nurse and is leading our vaccination uh, campaign operation. So, um, Joan, please. Well, hello. Good afternoon, everyone, and very happy to be here and share our information about our vaccination campaign. And I do want to say I really appreciate the county and the um, Chief Steinbeck and his crew for assisting us in getting this vaccine out as quickly as possible. Uh, the uh, county and all the municipalities, City of Henderson, North Las Vegas, and Las Vegas, Mesquite, and Boulder City have all been really helpful in uh, customizing our plan for their communities. So we're really uh, happy to have them on board and they're getting us some resources that we can get vaccine out even quicker. And we're looking at doubling our capacity in the next week or two and uh, also trying to serve the needs of those over 70 years of age, which we're really relieved that we can have that ability to do so. Okay, thank you, Joan. Uh, Corey. Okay, let's open it up now for questions. So if you are joining us by your computer, use the raise hand feature, which is on the bottom of your participants list. Uh, our first question today comes in the chat box from Dana Gentry. Are there any vaccination sites outdoors or are you planning to have any outdoors? Do you want me to take that? A question for Chief Steinbach or, right, Chief Steinbach, as far as logistics? Uh, it, many of us can answer that. I'll go ahead and let Joanne answer and then I'll, I'll add on to that. Sure. I mean, um, right now we have big enough venues indoors to do vaccine, which is preferable. Uh, this vaccine has to be kept cold. And so if we're outdoors, that can be, um, that can be very uh, inconsistent. So we would rather do it indoors. Um, if, we, if there is such a time that we would have to move outdoors, we would certainly do that. But, uh, you know, really giving a vaccine or a medical procedure out in uh, the elements is not the best practice. All right. Um, I just want to say that there are additional vaccines coming into the campaign that uh, will be submitted to the FDA for emergency use authorization. Uh, it's... One of them, like uh, the one from Johnson & Johnson, uh, probably might be uh, the one that could be used on that kind of a scenario, but uh, still we have to wait for those vaccines to be mm -hmm. authorized by FDA. Thank you. And then I'll just answer to Dana that uh, we've looked at outdoor facilities. Um, they are there as options, as uh, capacity and uh, grows. Um, they, are, they are options, but still within the restrictions that Joanne had, had spoke of. But mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to convey that there's many outdoor locations and facilities that are being considered as options. Next question today is from Michael Scott Davidson. Hi there, everybody. Michael from the Review Journal. <clears throat> Thank you for taking the time to do this press conference today. Um, I had a question about the workforce to actually get vaccines into arms. If we're planning on doing 40,000 to 45,000 per day, um, who will actually be the people that are, you know, uh, administering the shots? Um, what kind of training will they have? Um, and how will we pay them? And approximately how many will we need to administer that many per day? So just to recap on that, how many people will it take to administer 40 to 45,000 shots? Where are they coming from? What is their training? And what will we pay them? Or how will we pay them? Yeah, sure. Uh, so typically, um, nurses are usually our frontline uh, staff that we use for vaccine. 
we have been doing vaccine here at the health district for many years and we do a, we've had an outreach team that has uh, trained enough so that we can train others. So we have a train the trainer model. So um, we are um, getting vaccinators from um, the universities, uh, the nursing schools, medical schools, and uh, training their uh, professors to, um, uh, to train and also monitor uh, those vaccinators. Uh, EMTs and paramedics are now able to be vaccinators. So we have been doing a train the trainer model with all of the municipalities so that they can get enough vaccinators up and running. So that's how we've been doing it. Um, and it, it takes a lot of people uh, to do to do these uh, these clinics. And we are getting another partner, Clark County School District uh, nurses, and they had been working with us in testing. So that's where we're going to draw from getting forty thousand to forty five thousand in a week. And we could we could certainly do it. I'm totally convinced that we can do this safely and effectively for our population. Go back to our chat box for the next question from Michelle Price. She asks, can we repeat the numbers, please? 29,000 doses administered thus far. And do we know which frontline essential workers will be up first starting tomorrow, along with those 75 and older? Okay. You, you want, oh, you... Yeah, okay. So 29,000 is what is uh, been um, <clears throat> recorded. And uh, we expect um, twice that amount next week in the next week and a half i would say and uh the keep in mind we've been doing frontline workers since december 14th when the hospital started their workers and that filtered down to they're in their second dose right now um and then we're moving down the line with uh, nursing homes and with those residents so we've been uh, vaccinating not even a month yet and uh, we really had to wait till those folks got their vaccine first and now we're moving into our tiers. We have um, partners working with our, uh, what I'm looking at public safety and security on the uh, new plan. Uh, that that uh, group is, uh, is uh, moving along really well and we, and, but we're still working on that big medical group. There's about 50,000 people in there. So once we get it offered to everyone, then we move into the next group that frontline communities will support. At the same time, we'll we be also offering vaccine to those 70 and older, and that we will um, do concurrently in a, in, in a parallel fashion. And uh, we just started doing that today. Or, or, I'm sorry, we're starting tomorrow and then through the next week. Um, so, uh, as we increase our capacity, there will be more opportunities for that group to get vaccine. Our next question comes from Mary Hines. Hi, um, so our seniors are looking for actionable information and they're hearing that they can get vaccinated tomorrow. So how can they do that? How do they go about it? Well, they can access our website for appointments and keep in mind appointments are limited at this point. However, we are getting more appointments uh, available as, as, uh, as we get these clinics up and running. Um, some of the municipalities have, uh, um, have some capability as well. And we're going to be, we're, that's why we have the county working with us to be able to get messages out to those over 70 and working with um, communities that uh, they live in um, and also uh, working with the cities and uh, those uh, senior centers and uh, hospitals that may have access to that population. Right, um, and also, uh, I, I want to add that uh, uh, pharmacies, uh, Smith and uh, Walgreens, uh, they will start uh, offering vaccine January 20, according to information we receive from, from the state. And, and the details of how that's going to be 
uh, will be posted and shared once uh, it is uh, received from the state and, and those companies. But, uh, but the, the seniors will receive the vaccine from us and also from those pharmacies as well. So, so Mary, this is Marilyn. I'm concerned. I want to make sure that your story specifically says, please don't come to the health district. Please don't come to UMC. If you do not have appointment, please wait <clears throat> because we will not be ready for you. So it's important that they know that it is 78 and older uh, are the limited appointments that the health district has today. Uh, that they will be starting tomorrow. So as we ramp up and mm -hmm. as we get through the community, we have many different avenues to get through them. We believe within the next two weeks, the allocation to the pharmacies will be done. Uh, we are working with the state to ensure that there will be, we'll know exactly where they're at, but all of this is super important that everybody realize the importance of having an appointment. Because once you open that file, you have to give the vaccines because we do not want to waste any. So it's important that people know if you take the time to make an appointment, please show up because we're relying on you to be there. And if we don't, um, there's a reason why we're limiting them because we know how many um, clients that we got to see in that time frame to make sure that we do not waste any vaccines. And we are super proud that out of 29,000 that have been administered, less than 10 uh, have had some type of flaw. So that's a great, we're taking great care with it. So if you could please ensure that our residents know that it is slow and methodical and we, um, we will turn up the machine real soon and we'll get them lots of information. But this week, I need them to please try to get your appointments and know that more information will be coming. This is a very fluid situation and it'll take us, it'll take us a week or so to be able to ramp it up, much like our testing, and then everybody can come. And a quick follow-up, when do we expect a, a mass vaccination clinic? Well, we've already started some mass vaccination clinics. Um, as you would they're closed pods, so they're kind of by like by invitation only. So um, we'll probably be using that model for quite some time. And uh, so certain groups will be um, um, asked to make appointments and then we check when they come in whether they really belong to that group or not. Does that answer your question okay? I'm just wondering when they're, um, it does, I, I guess a follow-up would be, how are you verifying their identities? Well, either ID or some type of, if, if they're employer badge or some type of uh, identification like that. Age is easy. Thank you. Can I ask, uh, were you asking when we would have uh, sites open that would have uh, increased volume? Is that the question? It was. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm wondering if there's one of those really large sites, you yes. know, um, and when we might see that. Yeah, absolutely. So Cashman Field is our, is our first of what we call the Megapod. And so that uh, has a, a soft opening of tomorrow, which uh, um, is to work out some of the logistical issues that might be there. Um, again, that is with uh, those uh, frontline medical providers that, that will still be pushing people over there um, to uh, tomorrow uh, for that to occur. Starting on Friday, uh, they, it will be opened up with increased volume hoping to be able to do 2,000 a day. Our hope is that that site in the coming weeks will be able to do 4,000 a day. And then we plan on replicating that as necessary through the, through the valley, as long as um, supply and uh, the um, human resources to push it out, uh, match it, which uh, I believe we'll, we will have the human resources side of it. Uh, the supply side, uh, I would have to leave to Dr. Lagan or, or Joanne. Right. Uh, right. Thank you, Chief. And also, uh, we want to add that uh, uh, we will open a, a second mega vaccination site at Las Vegas Convention Center, and that probably will be within, within the next two weeks. 
Our next question today comes from Astrid Mendez. Hello, everyone. I wanted to know, you've been mentioning about the megapots and, and basically how is it going to be for seniors, but we have to remember that there are some seniors that are not in a senior center and they do have mobility issues. So what is the plan to actually get a hold of them? Not everybody will have a ride. Not everyone will be able to go to this megapot places and mm -hmm. still they will still need the vaccine. So what is it being done on that part? And uh, the, my second question, since we have a lot of people um, here in Nevada that have not been able to register as citizens or residents here uh, because of you know, everything that's going on with the DMV, what I'm trying to ask with this is, will out-of-state residents will be able to also be part of this vaccination plan, even if they're not they don't have an ID to show that they left here or, you know, or any other form of identification. But as long as they're part of the 75 group, will they be allowed to get their vaccine? <laughs> okay, uh, I will start by the last question and move, move forward. Uh, I think that uh, that last question is a very tricky one. And uh, I, I will add to that also, you know, we, ha we know that there is a, a, a relatively large uh, uh, undocumented uh, population here in, in Clark County. Uh, what, what I would say, and the Commissioner uh, Patrick and, and, and Councilman Black can uh, uh, you know, help me with this later, is that uh, we, uh, is the person doesn't have a, you know, a, a driver license of Nevada because uh, you mentioned that they are struggling getting through MTV and those kind of things, uh, still they have to show proof of residence here. Because, because otherwise it is, uh, what might happen is you will have, uh, you know, people who come here to, during the weekend for, you know, for uh, entertainment now uh, getting the opportunity to also get the vaccine in, in, in Las Vegas. So that's a, that's a very fine line that we, we have to walk. Uh, I don't know, Commissioner, if you want to add something. Sure, and Adrian, to your point, you had a lot of questions within a question. And I think that, right, as we work through all of this, we've had those discussions, there are, um, so one of the things that's why we're, you know, there's a lot of folks in our valley between 70 and 103, you know, that's a pretty wide range. That's why we're starting with 78 and above, because that's one group that we can get. And then as we go through them, we're going to get to the next group. Um, but look, uh, we have worked super hard, worked with the state, we, equality across the board. That is why we're running different tracks. That is why. Uh, we have a Hispanic outreach group that is uh, working through those conversations that the health district sits on and many of our local Latino groups. Uh, we have had several calls, um, Dr. Legan and myself, with the faith-based leaders because we are going to have all of those people who are going to help us. And then we are also working don't forget with the Department of Aging and with our seniors and home health care workers. So we are fortunate that we are a small community in the grand scheme of things and that we can collaborate. So there are over 80 of us that are on a minimum of uh, five calls a week where we collaborate with other partners. So our, our goal is to be able to not miss anybody who wants the vaccine as we roll through this. Um, but, but it's going to take time, you know, and so we've done a, a fairly great job uh, so far with the limited resources. And imagine, you know, we don't know what we're going to get for the vaccine the following week. So it's really hard to plan with something that you're not aware of. But we're hoping that that changes. Uh, we've been working with Health and Human Services. So we will continue to um, move through. Um, as we get through those 78 and older, then we'll reach down to, you know, I, I don't know what the number is. Maybe it's 74 to 78, depending what that demographic looks like. And we'll continue to move forward as we also ensure that our workforce is safe. So uh, you can be rest assured we're working with uh, 144 different languages within our community and that we have many different subgroups. Um, 
faith-based leaders that we're all working together and talking to ensure that uh, nobody gets left behind if they want the vaccine. Does that help, Dr. Lego? I'm sorry. Long yeah, answer. Yeah, so. uh, could, I, could I add a couple things with that? You, they were talking about the difficulties with people getting to these megapods. And uh, we've, we have been talking about that. And so uh, we're, that's why we're going to reserve um, appointments for those who have mobility problems to, to, for example, at the health district here where the distance is, isn't so much or other uh, e more easily accessible. And then uh, also um, we are still working on getting a uh, a clinic for those with disabilities or with cognitive issues where you would not want someone in a noisy big pot. So those are some things we are considering. And as far as an ID or whatever they would need for vaccination, keep in mind if they live here, they can get a vaccine here, okay? So we just ask for ID because it's a medical procedure. We have to know that, yeah, that's you, that's your birth date. But beyond that, we don't really collect any other information except general demographics. So just to keep that in mind that we're not asking for um, birth certificates, we're not asking for that type of, of uh, ID. If you don't have a Nevada ID and you live here and you have something else that, that can identify you, that, that works just fine. Right. I, I just want to emphasize that we, we don't look for immigration uh, data, so we don't ask for that kind of status from anyone. That, that's not a requirement uh, for a person to get the vaccine here. The only requirement is that they are Nevada residents, and that's what we try to figure out. I, I just wanted to say regarding the seniors also that, as I mentioned before, uh, the pharmacies will be also offering vaccine to the seniors, so they will have that a bit, that a possibility in the neighborhood based on on the agreement between the state and some of those pharmacies. Before we move on, I've got two things to note. If you are um, hoping to do an interview with Dr. Legan in Spanish, we will save that for the end of the interview today. So at this time, uh, please lower your hand, and we will return to you. And if anyone has any follow-up questions to questions they've already asked, please send those to the Office of Communication. We do have a lot of um, brand new people that we wanna get through right now. So our next question we're gonna take from Joe Moeller. Wait, hold on, where'd you go? Okay, there you go. I'm here. Oh uh, yeah, this is Joe Moeller from uh, Channel 8 here in Las Vegas. Um, I am uh, wondering the number of locations that the vaccine will be administered is there, do you have a number of locations that is? And I heard you just mention uh, pharmacies. Um, what sort of information should people know about what particular pharmacies will be able to give this out? And if you could also clarify, someone had asked a question about 40 to 45,000 vaccines a day. I just want to clarify that is the goal for a week. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, information about pharmacies, the only information I can share with you today is that as today, uh, the, the state is, is working this agreement with uh, uh, Walgreens and Smith Pharmacy. Now, the location of the pharmacy, that's something that will be disclosed by the state uh, once they are ready to do that. The, the plan is to, to start that program in January 20, but uh, that's, that information uh, uh, will come from the state and we will share with you. Um, the second question was, Oh, sorry, I unmuted him. Let me find him again. <laughs> okay, sir. Joe, can you raise your hand again? Oh, wait, I just found you. All right, there we go. I figured it out. Yeah, uh, someone had asked a question earlier about um, the the goal a day. And oh. I think, it, is it forty to 45,000 a week, right? It's a week, right. It's a week, and, and there are multiple uh, sites. Right? I can tell you, for we have the site here at the cabin for the health district. Also, we have the uh, uh, Western Heights uh, School. Uh, also, UNV, uh, Rosman University, uh, Toro University, uh, Cashman that will start uh, on Saturday Friday. Uh, also, North Las Vegas, City of North Las Vegas. We have also uh, UNC. 
We have the city of Henderson. Uh, we have also uh, uh, in the near future, a Mesquite and Boulder City add to that equation. And, and that's, that's, that's pretty much what we have right now. Joan, I, I think that's, that's from our table. I, I don't think I'm missing any right now. Yeah, I think that, I think that would cover it. And, and we may find um, other partners uh, in the future, but those are the main ones right now. Next up is Jacqueline Schultz from Fox 5. Hi everyone, uh, looking for some clarification on the 78 and up. Is that only for uh, the Southern Nevada Health District site, uh, not for the pharmacies or the Cashman Center? And then um, a big question I have is practically, what do you need to know and prepare for when you go to an appointment? How much time? Um, definitely your ID, proof of residence, any other medical documents if you have uh, allergies or whatnot, and then uh, where does your personal information go? A lot of people have questions about privacy. You on? Yeah, sure. Um, so when they come to any of the um, mass vaccination clinics, an ID, um, if they're in a group, some type of proof of that they're in this group, like a pay stub or something like that. Um, and uh, possibly some insurance information. We're not collecting that now, but we may be in the future. And, uh, and they should know about their medical history as far as um, anaphylaxis, if they've ever had a, a, um, a reaction to a medication or food that would cause them to use an EpiPen. And uh, those with uh, uh, conditions that may suppress the immune system. And so if, if they have a, that type of condition or they're pregnant or breastfeeding, they should really discuss with their doctor first and determine whether they should get the vaccine or not. Um, those are the main, main questions. Also, um, if they've had a vaccine in the uh, 14 days before um, the date of their uh, COVID vaccine. We cannot vaccinate those individuals. So we screen for those right away when they come in and then they, um, you know, uh, get the vaccine from the provider. And then we have them uh, stay for about 15 minutes um, to monitor to make sure that they're okay and that there is no reaction. And then we have a, a medical support if that does occur. I would say it's really hard to say how long it would take. I mean, it could take anywhere, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 20. I mean, it, it, or if you have to wait in line, uh, if people are, really adhere to the appointment system, it goes a lot quicker. So um, did that answer all your questions? Joanne, I think she's asking, and you know, I've been accused of misquoting and everything. So it is seventy and above that seventy, is, yes, uh, within this. But I thought that I heard um, Dr. Lagon say that we were going to try and manage our seniors so that we didn't have a free for all. So we were trying to uh, limit groups, but it is seventy and above. So please do not. Uh, misquote to seniors because they're already um, calling because they all want to know, but, but we have to figure out how to manage uh, the seniors so that we don't have thousands of seniors showing up at the same time and sitting outside and waiting for hours, and, and that's really Correct. what we're trying to avoid. So it is 70 and above, yes. um, yeah. but we're trying to manage groups so that we um, ensure that we protect our seniors while they're waiting to get protected. Right, that, yes, it's 70 and above. And um, I think you were asking about pharmacy access too. Uh, how will that go? And that is yet to be determined. I, I, I would um, I guess that though that access will be done through the pharmacies. They're pretty good at um, getting their information out there. We, our website will continue to uh, compile information on clinics and access on our website uh, as, we, as we find out that information. 
Joanne, I think Jacqueline also asked about the privacy of the information that they supply when they um, make an appointment. Correct. So um, our, you know, we, it is a medical record. So um, we have uh, security in place so that uh, people um, do not have access to, to that record except for those who really need to have it, okay? So uh, our uh, documentation system is secure and as well as like, for example, like the hospitals and, and um, UNLV are using a system, electronic system that um, is what everyone else uses in their medical uh, offices and in their hospital. So it's the same type of system. Um, our, uh, our vaccine information is required by state law to be reported to the state immunization. Uh, Nevada WebIZ is the immunization information system and uh, so that people can look and they can find their own record through a patient portal and they can get their record through that. So uh, that's exactly where the, the data resides. It resides in any medical uh, office like our system or if it's UNLV, it's, it's um, their EPIC system and same thing with UMC and all the hospitals. Uh, what we are doing at the, um, for Cashman will be residing in, in our data. So it, it is handled the same as if you would come to our office and get any other procedure. We're going to take one more voice question today and two questions from the chat box. So our next voice question comes from Frank. If we can get him unmuted. Here you go. Hi, it's uh, Frank Nemec. Uh, Board of Health for the Southern Nevada Health District. My, my question is, does the health district plan on continuing to hold back half the doses in preparation for a subsequent boost in three to four weeks, or will the vaccines be administered as they arrive? So the vaccine is, is not held. The second dose is not held here at the health district. It's held at the federal level. So the federal um, government reserves that second dose and um, when it's needed, it gets shipped to us. So we don't have it on hand. Um, however, um, we're, it is our understanding through communication with CDC and the state is that when we are ready to, when that is due, then that vaccine will be shipped to us and then we give that concurrently with all the other first doses. Does that make it clear? Well, I, 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 I just uh, want to add that uh, uh, according to uh, you know, news uh, coming from uh, regarding the, the next administration, uh, actually there will not be any more holding of the second dose and that probably will happen after the change of administration. Next question from the chat box comes from um, Damon Smith asking, how will vaccinations be tracked once hospitality employees are included and will employers have access in order to track completion at our properties? Well, typically, um, employers, it is a medical record. And um, so typically, employers are not, do not have access. However, we all know that many medical facilities, you know, do keep track of vaccinations of their employees. So typically, what um, employers would do is ask for that um, documentation that they have received the vaccine, excuse me, <clears throat> For, uh, for a particular reason. So at this point, um, it, it will, it's accessible to the individual only and their healthcare providers. Okay, <laughs> let me clarify here because uh, just, just to make sure everybody understand. Uh, uh, okay, the question was, uh, I believe, for hospitality, hospitality uh, people which is different from the hospital people. Uh, the, the hospital, they have the dual function of being employers 
and also they are administering the vaccine. So just because of that particular situation, they they have a, a pretty good idea of uh, of how many employees uh, are are being vaccinated. Uh, that doesn't happen to the rest of the community because the the information uh, from the people who receive the, the vaccine is 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 actually protected by HIPAA, is, is confidential information, and uh, the health district uh, cannot release that information to the employer. So. Uh, uh, is it, it, actually a, a function uh, between the employer and the employee on how they want to to communicate that kind of information among themselves. But the health district cannot cannot assist any employer with that kind of information. Another question from the chat box. Uh, Gerard Romalho from Channel 3 is asking, will all vaccines require appointment through the health district, even if they're at a pharmacy? No, the, no, it doesn't. Uh, the health district, what it's doing is just facilitating the information to the community. So we, we are trying to post in our website uh, as much information as possible to help our community identified a vac vaccination site where they can go and get the shots. Uh, it's, it's not a requirement that each pharmacy uh, place uh, their registration site in, in, a, in our website. We are just providing a service to the community. So the, the answer to that question is no. Okay, two, well, I'm sorry, Marilyn, go ahead. Commissioner Kirkpatrick, you are muted at this time. Please unmute yourself. Sorry, sometimes it's good if I mute myself. <laughs> so, uh, what I just want to press upon to the press is, uh, you know, this is no different than how we do the flu shots. You know, we have several pharmacy partners where you can go to your local pharmacy, you can make the appointment with them to get their flu shot, or you can choose to come to the health district. Um, this is just a bigger scale of doing it. So it, it's not new, except it's much bigger. This is what the health district does do. This is how we work with our community partners across um, the valley. Um, even when it comes to employers, employers may ask for, to make sure that you got your TB shot, right? Or to make sure that um, you got your healthcare shot. So um, the employers, um, that's entirely up to them, but for us as a health district, this really is just on a bigger scale. It's a little bit harder to navigate much because of the sensitivity of the vaccine. So we have to be mindful of that. But um, this, that is one of the reasons why we've brought in so many partners in because people are used to and comfortable going to the Walgreens or to the Smiths to get their flu shot. And we want them to have that same option um, or they can have one of the other sites. So it's important that um, we not scare people from getting the vaccine, um, although it's a little bit uh, rough in the beginning as it is any other normal flu season, we're trying to get as many of them out. So I just wanna make sure that people understand that this is what we normally do um, every year uh, pre-flu season. Uh, and this is just another vaccine within our wheelhouse that we have to move forward with. And we want people to um, realize that we have a, a lot of folks that get the flu shot. Um, and it should be, we're working very hard to mirror that operation so that they have options that they're comfortable with. At this time, we will be wrapping up the English portion of this interview. If you are from the media and you have a follow-up question or, or a new question, please feel free to reach out to the Office of Communications. If you're a member of the public, feel free to send an email to snhdpublicinformation at snhd.org, and we'll be happy to get back to you as soon as we can. And if you are looking for all of our COVID information, including how to make an appointment, our direct COVID website link is www dot snhd dot info slash covid but please be patient because we are experiencing high volumes of traffic on the site today so it may be slow at times